Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Star Online Episode 3, where today we're going to continue looking for the most delicious food. So let's get that quest going. I'm searching for a certain food. Ah, but I suppose I said that last time. According to secret info on Net5, the shop is now using the Tower of Kalem to make deliveries. This time the information is good. Ooh, I want to eat it! All right. So let's yeah, let's go with her. Have you heard that new singer on Net Five? He's been doing covers of old songs lately, but with so much energy and feeling, his music really rocks. Uh, hmm. Now what was it? It um, what was it? Oh, I can't remember. I'm sure this had something to do with that shop. But I just can't remember. Hi, Ogun. I mean, we can't just let the arcs run around looking for cakes. That's a pretty solid hand. Start dice. Set. And that's a pretty solid roll. And now we've got four points used. And with his range being what it is, if we move forward even one space, he can hit us. Action. So we're just going to stay here. Draw. Moving left and right wouldn't help at all. So yeah. Ooh, a fork. If we roll a four, I am equipping that fork. All right, so he's got a Pofoli Slime out, but we've got a barrier, so it can do literally nothing to us without him spending action cards for it. Do I want to set the mech gun even though I've got a fork available? I don't think I do. No need to foe it. We can still freeze it. Nope. I love this music, by the way. And let's go ahead and throw away our mech gun. Got another barrier for if this one dies. Nice try, buddy. Gonna have to kill that love rappy before he gets any XP. Alright. That's enough that we can go over there and kill the rappy. Not gonna cast Foey, that would be a little bit of a waste. Sure, he might guard against this, but hey, maybe we'll freeze it. Though, so, it's got ability trap, so it can't be frozen by this ability. Don't need that suppressed gun. Cool, another barrier. got two slimes on the field. It's not really any worse than one. Though I am a little surrounded now. Defense. Okay, no thank you. 
though we are definitely losing this barrier this round, which is unfortunate because it means that Rappy will have some XP. So if we get a two, then we'll go ahead and murder the Rappy. Preferably a five or a six. Yeah. So now we can use this fork. And we can use this barrier. Can't move nowhere. So they both got TP plus three. So that's just Ice Staff, Foey the Rappy. Okay. Swapping my AP and TP is a little rude, but we still got through there because... I think it swaps the AP and TP of the thing specifically using the attack. So, yeah, reduced our damage by one, or by two, rather. But since we were still doing two plus two, it was enough to get through the three XP and the one HP. Hey, we got some techs. Okay, no idea why he would set that way over there, but I'll take it. Because now we've got an open path to him. Defense. Yeah, I don't mind one damage. Two damage is a little worse. Yeah. Let's keep this barrier for at least one more attack. Ooh, excellent. So now we can come on over here. And then we'll zap him with this. Burn him with that. And he's got nothing to guard against it. Oh, but he's got impact half guard. That's right. He doesn't take full damage from things that do high damage. What is it? Six damage or more? Yeah. Okay, so it was a bad idea to bring Enolis, because if we're using Tex, she'll never be doing less than that. Not with the equipment we've got. I guess it's time to resort to physical attacks when I can. He had to spend a bunch of points getting to where he is, so. Don't know why he didn't attack me himself, but whatever. I can see he did put his Mothman in the way. The slimes are really a non-issue as long as I've got a barrier. So I guess we just destroy this Mothman. Haha, it's frozen. I like how it still floats up and down, but the ice doesn't. If we get the points to use it, Sonity will be fine. But we'd pretty much have to loot. Well, not pretty much. We would have to lose our fork or our staff. <coughs> Sneezing is fun. I recommend it. Oh, 
Okay, we're cornered. Now we have to kill a slime. Goodbye, barrier. You will be missed. Also, we don't have anything to defend, so we might actually lose our staff or something sooner rather than later. Or not. They were just moving to block me, I guess. Well, got that back. Okay, so let's do that. Really should have done it the other way around. Should have foeyed this one and staffed that one. Oh well. I made a mistake. I like how you can't see my equipment through the slimes. Like, they're transparent, but it looks like I'm holding nothing when you're looking through the slimes. Hey, it's frozen. Still animates just fine, but it's frozen. Don't need those. You a mag. Okay. Govolmer's actually not so bad, considering we're not a melee character, so having less AP doesn't matter too much, but then again, I, I do have to use melee attacks to get any damage on this guy. So this'll do four. That's not gonna get half guarded. I mean, the Govalmer is really just a non-issue because of where he summoned it. I don't know why NPCs in this game are so terrible at choosing summoning locations. I don't remember it being this bad. Wow, he is really just trying to get away. So, we can't freeze him, which means the fork is the best option. Thanks for making me do one more damage. Good job, Ogun, you did it. You know what? We don't need the mags. We're not going to get a chance to use them anyway. No, oh, he rolled a big number. And he's still just trying to run away. Oh, and he couldn't even block me off. So we probably win here, considering he's only got a two for his defense die. Unless he's got two dodges, which he doesn't, so we win. Really? A D? I guess it did take a while, and we didn't do any really big hits because impact half guard, but whatever. Aerial Assassin. Alright, so it's mostly just a stat stick. Good range. Very good HP. Very good AP. Cost is a little high. But honestly, I wouldn't mind equipping that. So that'll probably go into the Ranger deck at some point. They weren't there this time either? But I was so sure about the info this time. My mother doesn't have much time left. I'll contact you again if I come across any new info. Monica. Oh yes, I remember it about the singer. His name is something like Beck Highs. He sings my mother's favorite songs. They're all old songs, but anyway.
And Beck Highs is someone that we get to... Actually, I think we've already met him, but we definitely get to meet him in the ARCS campaign. And now for our test of power. Viviana tells me that there's an especially strong fighter in Mortis Fawns. I'd like to take him on. Right, that's an Orland quest. Gotta go get Orland. And actually, for Orland, we might want to make him his own deck. Like, it's not as necessary as for other characters. But hey, I haven't made a deck on camera. And even if it's not super necessary to make him his own deck, it does help. So we're starting down here at the bottom. Dice plus one's always good. Definitely want three guards, one reduce, three dodges. Don't really need any techs. Sword attack, absolutely. And a few action cards. Definitely the mag. A couple of shields, a barrier. And then the rest, all sword type things. So admittedly, we want them to cost two or less if possible. I wish we had more good sword type things that cost two or less. But I guess we'll go with this Dragon Slayer. Or, nah, let's get more daggers. Alright, that'll be a just fine deck. Whoops, press B one time too many. I forget how many letters were allowed, but if we can fit it. Oh, can't pluralize it, but somehow that makes it even better. Yeah, that's deck building. Admittedly, I didn't need to look in as much detail on a bunch of stuff because I have a general idea what most of these cards do. Uh, it looks like there's more than one fighter in Mortis Fawns. But that is just potentially good for us because, ooh, minimum roll four. Okay, so this is going to be a battle where the opponents are probably using big things. Oh, we're with Viviana. That's a bit of a shame. Simply because it means there's not going to be as many swords on our side of the field. Previously, I asked Viviana to inform me of any tough opponents she finds. On her last mission, she told me that she ran into an Arx who she said looked extra tough. It seems she has spotted this same arcs once again. I've been recently trying to find what it means to have a real fight, so I wish to take on a true warrior. Please allow me to fight this opponent. All right. Yeah, if our partner was equipping more swords, then Orland's sword boost thing would get even more value. But she's a force, so she's not going to use a million swords. Wow, really, KC? You're saying nothing? Oh, good stance, huh? I mean, it's the same stance that you've got going on. Well, it would be if you weren't holding a weapon. And we've got our mag, so 
We keep this hand. Also, I keep on using the right C-stick to try and select things, because in almost every other situation when you're not in a quest, you can use the right C-stick. Well, I guess it's just the C-stick. You can use the C-stick to select menu options, but in a quest, it's camera control. And C-stick was also for menuing in episodes one and two. So yeah, it's a force of habit type deal. Also, Orland with three daggers would actually be quite dangerous. Eh, sure, let's dice plus one, everyone. Now we're rolling five to seven. And I don't really feel the need to move forward right now. Hopefully we get <coughs> something that costs three before too long, because that's all we can fit on at this point. Hi, Pan Arms. Ooh, Pan Arms is a little unfortunate when we've got daggers, because we hit block. <coughs> what I wouldn't give for my Durandal right about now. Both of those enemies have weak hit block. Do I want to equip the slicer just to get the sword boost? I kind of do, but I also kind of super don't. But I kind of do. So that will be a thing. Defense. Oh, there goes that Morphos. All right. So he's taking zero damage from this. But our dagger should be doing three per hit, which I think gets through. No, it needs to be four. So our dagger is completely worthless against this Pan Arms. That's a bit of a shame. Kind of shot myself in the foot. But that Slash will at least let us use the Slicer. Hello, another Pan Arms. Move it forward one space. Yes. Oh, with Endu in the middle. Okay, so... Question is, do we let our daggers die? That's a little overkill on the defense card there. I mean, don't let me tell you how to play the game, but... Okay, so... We have to save our mag. We have to. We have to. And keeping the shield healthy is... Wait, why is he only doing one? What's... Oh, Viviana's major half guard? Is that doing it? Does that apply to everything? I don't know. So I'm going to protect my investments. I shouldn't have saved the daggers. That's fine, there's nothing paralyzed, so paralyzed death means nothing. Yeah, I should have let him kill the daggers. But if we can take that space to our right... Yeah, I really should have let the daggers die. Then we can go ahead and slash with this, but first... No, I, I can't attack with it. So we'll just do this to check for a defense card. And then we'll attack slash. And that defense. might clear out the pan arms. Well, that one's gone. Ooh, that means our dagger is doing direct damage. Or not. <laughs> 
We tried. Well, our slash is doing direct damage. And we're also killing the pan arms. Okay, we don't super need more daggers. And honestly, we don't super need this saber. Hey, look, more daggers. All right, we got a Morphos. Don't got to care about that. Got an Arlen. Don't got to care about that. Arlen's, they, they're like Realmitos. They've got AT swap permanent. So, yeah, they swap their AP and TP every time they attack. One is one, the other is five. They're pretty useful in a mixed attacking deck. Also, it can cause paralysis, which is nice. Yeah, that's a little overkill there, Viviana. Good, he didn't paralyze my shield. Change dice. Set. Action. Okay, we'll check for defense cards with a beefy hit. And then we'll kill him. All right, so there was a defense card. But if there isn't another defense card, he is dead. All right, we win. Ooh, I like getting a B. Yeah, Orlin is at his best if he's got like four swords equipped or if he's got an ally who also has swords equipped photon claws all right another native guard native guard's gonna be a lot better when we're playing as arcs because then we can make a native deck and it'll just work for everything because, yeah. Locks attacks by native creatures. Oh, wait. Only by native creatures? It doesn't... No, it, it also... Blocks attacks for native creatures, right? Because we've seen machines use machine guard and block everything. So, yeah. Hand disruptor is nice. Heavy pierce is also nice. If you're fighting a hunter. So, yeah. Not so good for fighting arcs, which unfortunately means it's actually kind of worthless for us. For the first time in ages, I fought with all of my spirit. Indeed, the one called KC is quite skilled. I hope to be able to do battle with him again before my relit flame of fighting passion burns out. Wait, I thought he was going to be talking about Endu. KC's not a swordsman. Also, we didn't even kill him. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. Join us next time when we do our next story mission. See you then, friends.